This video has been compiled to give you an introduction to the new Performance Components module developed by IES in conjunction with Monodraft. The Performance Components are available from a new icon called Add Components from External Library. Here, the Monodraft Wing Catchers are available from a drop-down which lists all the different types of Monodraft Wing Catchers and the corresponding sizes that are available. Each type of Wing Catcher comes with a standard specification detailing the details of the products, as well as the controls, the available colours, and links to an MBS specification, and for more information, a product data sheet. Now let's say that we want to import this XA170 into the model. We've checked that it's the right system we require. We now simply tick the system, and then click Import Check Components, and that component is now available within our model. So here we have a, a generic three-storey office block, and we're going to place our wing catchers within this model, so that we can simulate a natural ventilation strategy. So, we're going to say that I want to serve this third floor office block here, so I need to duct the wind capture system down through this roof zone. Go down a level to the roof zone, change the plan view, and from surface go to component. Here, the wind catcher which I imported previously has now become available. I can then define the plane at which I want the wind catcher to sit in relation to the zone, the duct length, and using the new place components icon, I can simply place my wing catcher in the model in the desired location. Now that's at the correct view and plan view. If I just check in my elevation, I can see that I need to extend the duct or move the wing catcher down so that the underside of the wing catcher sits flush with the underside of the ceiling. Now my wing catcher is there at component level, but what I need to do now is fix it with the geometry of the model using the new finalized components bus. Here, the wing catcher geometry which intersects with the roof has been subtracted and the wing catcher has subsequently been, subsequently been merged with the geometry of the model. This comes complete with all the constructions, the thermal templates, the Mac floor opening profiles, and as you can see from this, the textures. So in terms of everything that needs to be done to that wing catcher with regards to an Apache dynamic thermal simulation, it is ready to simulate. And we can see that the damper or egg crate grill arrangement is sitting flush with the ceiling underneath. So here I've simply repeated that process four additional times and we now have five wing catchers serving this top floor office area as per the previous method that I've just shown you. Now, with regards to an Apache Dynamic Thermal Simulation, assuming that we've run the Suncast model, we need to set up all our thermal and construction templates using Apache, I can show you here that the macro flow profiles for the wing catch have been brought in. One for the Quantum Damper, which features Monodraft's indent control strategy, and one for the XAir 170 louvers, where the discharge coefficient is assigned to account for the losses of the system. So I can simply go into Apache now, and just to show you that the right thermal template has come in, if we go to tabular edit using one of the monodraft wind catchers, we can see there is a specific monodraft wind catcher thermal template assigned to that zone, which will be an unconditioned space. So I'll save changes to my model, make sure that my macro flow link is clicked for the Apache Dynamic Simulation, and from there I can simulate. So now that we've run our Apache Dynamic Thermal Simulation, we can select the room which our wind catchers are serving, and here we can analyze our different result sets. So we've got the dry resultant temperature here, which we can see is not exceeding 32 degrees over the course of the summer season. We can also look at how many hours are exceeding 28 degrees to ensure that we've got SIPSI Guide A compliance. So we can see that there's no more than 20 hours exceeding 28 degrees, which means that we will comply with the SIPSI criteria for naturally ventilated buildings. I can also check my air quality through looking at the CO2 concentrations, which here doesn't exceed 850 ppm over the course of the non-heating season, which again is what we would expect. And there's other such variables that you can look at. Uh, we can look at total internal ventilation rates from the Mac flow internal vent and such. Now another useful tool available in Vista Pro uh, is the Mac flow bulk airflow analysis. So here we can select the zone, go down to zone level, and pose that on a wind rose, and look at a set point in time at how the wind catcher is performing in accordance with the external wind speed and direction. So here we have our room. We can see that the wind 
is coming at this point in time from a southwesterly direction. We'll just move that into the middle of the day so that we have got more of the wind present. So here we've got the wind coming from the southwest. And if we zoom in on the quadrants which is serving the room here, we can see that those quadrants with the blue arrows are upwind, therefore the wind is being channeled down through the wind capture into the room. And those represented by the red arrows are extracting because they are downwind of the quadrant where the, the negative pressure is experienced. So this gives us a huge amount of confidence in the fact that IES is replicating the performance of wind catches as we would expect.